morning guys, welcome to the vlog. Today we are in beautiful Cancun and we have a hurricane about to hit. Yes, you heard that correctly. Hurricane Grace, we were just notified, is about to hit Cancun, Mexico in about, mm, about five, six hours later this evening. That's a lot different than the plans we had for our Mexico vacation, but this is gonna be our first hurricane we get to experience, and we will keep you updated for how this appears to go. So the hurricane that's about to hit is called Hurricane Grace. We just heard about it. We're not exactly sure what to expect, but we have done some research, and it is only a category one hurricane, which is a very, very minor hurricane about 65 to 85 mile an hour winds. This hurricane has changed quite a few of our plans because we were supposed to do some tours down to Tulum. We were also gonna think about going jet skiing today. However, all of those had to be postponed because the hurricane is supposed to hit directly in Tulum, which is where all the cenotes are. So we're gonna just take you guys along. We're gonna go to a shopping center right here, take the bus there. The winds have currently started picking up here. It has started raining off and on pretty hard. And so I guess we'll take you along and see what it feels like to go through your first hurricane. We've been here in Mexico for about three days, so this is pretty exciting. So this is the food we've ordered. We ordered some Chinese food from Comida Chinese, I think. Turns out they don't accept cards, so that ensued a little bit of panic as I had to run and go find cash while we'd ordered our food. It's a good time. The family ordered three sopes each. We're gonna dive in and then we'll let you know how it was. Alrighty guys, we just enjoyed some absolutely fantastic sopes. Very authentic and uh, we are here in Taco Bell. So for our Chinese food, it actually turned out to be really delicious. However, we were not sure what flavor we were actually going for. So we weren't sure if we were looking more towards an American Chinese take or a Mexican Chinese take, but it was really good either way. Now we're gonna go find something else to do. We just stopped by Hagadas and then we ordered a few desserts. If you wanna say, I got a mango lime mojito and like thought a crumble cookie. Well, you can hear it right there. The thunder and lightning going on outside and it is currently raining through the cracks in the roof of the mall. Uh, you heard that first, that's our first hurricane. Things are breaking and uh, we're about 45 minutes away from our hotel. So we're gonna try to get home. This is getting pretty intense. Uh, we'll keep you updated. Keep you updated. Well, after quite an eventful tour downtown, we got lost on a different bus. We were able to swing by a supermarket and then finish the walk home. Barely made it back as the storm was coming in. But now the storm is kind of getting more intense. They've taken all the beach stuff in and the waves are getting taller. So we'll keep you updated as the storm continues to progress. Alrighty, this is a few hours later. The hurricane should be hitting in about three hours. So I'll give you an update. I'll open this door, kind of what we're experiencing. Winds are pretty strong. The rain's picking up. You can see, well, I don't know if you can see, but the ocean's incredibly strong right now. Trees are blowing. Back inside we go. Our resort came by and brought us about 20 towels to shovel against all the windows and doors in order to prevent flooding as it comes in this evening. So this is pretty interesting. So far we're not in danger. 
it's a pretty low category hurricane, but it does not mean it's not going to be a pretty rough storm because for it to reach a hurricane status, it has to be like 85 mile an hour winds, I think, or something along that lines. Not too sure. Again, this is my first hurricane, but yeah, it's pretty exciting. So don't know if we'll get much sleep tonight, but I'll keep you updated. Well, good morning, guys. That was definitely one of the worst storms I've ever been in. Uh, we made it through the night, very little sleep. It was probably about 85 mile an hour winds. The palm trees were going all over. I think you just saw that clip where you could just hear the wind just going crazy about two in the morning. One of the craziest things for me is how the wind and water were able to come through these sealed doors. Right here is what we have at each of our entrances. They're all sealed, they're weather stripped and you have a latch holding this locked door shut. And yet all of these towels are soaked and the wind was literally pushing these curtains, you can see, like slapping them around because the wind was so strong. So I'm gonna head out on the balcony. It's dumping rain, the hurricane's still in full effect, but it's calmed down a little bit more. So it's a little more safe for me to go out. I'm just gonna get drenched and I'm gonna show you. I looked through my window and uh, there's some pretty bad damage out there, especially on the dock. Wow, look at all that. That was all perfectly smooth. It's actually ripping apart the barrier there. You can see broken pipes down there. And then looking over here, that's a broken dock. That dock should continue for about another 20 feet, but you can see chunks of it floating in the water. So it ripped that apart. Also, these are all the buoys. This set of buoys was on this side of the beach completely wrapped itself around the dock and it's over here you can see some buoys out there and then look at these waves just coming over this is insane so i'm gonna stretch to go inside and i'll update you with the next update Alrighty, it is about two hours later now and i have another update for you the ocean has now started to bring in a ton of seaweed look at this this beach you remember seeing that but look at all this brown stuff Heading over here, this beach got it a lot worse. That's all just seaweed. And yesterday, if you remember the clip, the beach went out to about here. So all this is just covered in a bunch of seaweed. Here's a better view of the dock. See how it's all rippled? You can see it's just destroyed. And then looking out over there, that was an entire dock. All of that is missing now. So this is the final update of the hurricane from the hotel. There's not much more to show you. It's just, you know, it's destroyed a lot of stuff. But as we head into town later today, if we're allowed to, we're not allowed to leave right now, but if we're allowed to leave, I will update you on what the town looks like. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming along on our first hurricane experience. Okay, we have finally left the hotel. Obviously our plans have changed. We were supposed to be in Tulum today, but well, Tulum was the place where the hurricane hit the worst, so we're not going there. We may not go there. But we ventured out of the hotel, and we're gonna go get a massage now. So, I guess that's what we're gonna do now. So, I don't know what this is called, but we're doing the fish thing for your feet. Fish pedicure. Fish pedicure. Here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh, I don't like that at all. <laughs>
Alrighty guys, I'm going first for my first massage and then I'll let you know after how it was. But here's the setup. It's actually really relaxing, but I have to turn on the lights. It's not as nice in here. I'll show you after. Well, good morning guys. Obviously that massage was very relaxing for me because we just came back to the hotel and fell asleep. So my experience, it was really, really good. I felt like she worked out a lot of knots in my back. It's my first massage, so I would definitely recommend it. It was a lot of fun. Zoya, uh, she got a massage and then a facial where they like rub your face. I don't know, I don't know. She can tell you more about it, but how was your experience? My 25 minute massage was very good and it was one of my first times, so I didn't really know what to expect, but I thought my experience was really good. I bought a facial at the same time. I didn't know what to expect from that either. I don't know if I would recommend a facial just because I felt like it was a little rough from my sensitive skin, but if you don't have sensitive skin, I'm sure it would be great. Yeah, well, there you go. I obviously didn't know what it was. So, so anyways, we're down here by the pool the next morning and Obviously with the hurricane, as you guys got to see yesterday, really, really changed a lot of plans for this vlog. We were supposed to have things almost every day. And you know, here's the beach right in front of us. That is probably a hundred feet of seaweed just on the beach. Not really the white sandy beaches you'd be kind of hoping for on vacation. So there's been a lot of changes. Um, one of those being that Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we have nothing to do. However, tomorrow, which is our last day here in Cancun Saturday, we are going all the way out to Tulum, where the epicenter or the, the hardest point of the hurricane hit. But we got a private tour. We're gonna go out there. Should be a lot of fun. But today we're just kind of relaxing at the pool, just getting, you know, food and whatever. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go jump in the pool, take you just along with just a little bit of today, and then tomorrow will be a lot more exciting. We're taking a refreshing dip in the pool, and uh, we'll see where the afternoon takes us. Alrighty, the next update for the day is that we, after many, many attempts, and I'm talking probably 15 tries, we successfully ordered a pizza. So a guy on a motorcycle, super cool, just delivered it. And now we have pizza. So we'll eat that and then we'll probably catch you guys in the morning for our tour to Tulum. Good morning guys. It's about 6 a.m. in the morning, which is closer to 4 a.m. my body time. And man, I'm exhausted. But check out that sunrise. And today we're gonna to be heading to Tulum which should be really pretty, and I'll take you guys along. We have arrived at Chichen Itza. We are beginning to go on our tour where we are looking at these Mayan ruins. Right behind me is the first structure and I'll keep showing you around what we see. The largest one. But besides this one, they found seven more at Chichen Itza, different sizes. There's some of those are half size of that field over there, which is clear that the ball trains were well since they were two. Not the skill to train, especially a super brain one. Ladies, gentlemen, I'm gonna show the carvings. The one cat that is holding on the right hand a huge obsidian knife, and at the left, from the hair, the head of the other cat. So it is clear that this guy took the head off of the other captain. 
We believe the captain of the losing team sacrifices the captain of the winning team. Oh no. That oh, sounds crazy. Totally crazy. Who wants to win a, a game if you're going to lose your head at the end? Or once you become a fanatic. And then, when you come to play here, you're going to fight to win because that's the only way to win. You're right to go to serve the God of heaven for the eternity. Got it? That's why, that's why Mexico never won to win a World Cup. <laughs> 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 so ladies and gentlemen, we're sitting up on top. That was the VIP seat of the King of Christian is his court. And the other VIP seat of the Kings and the Cross of the King was for another To be honest, we don't know. We don't have any idea how this guy did the finals. Of the Mayan World Cup, the Mayan Super Bowl. The Mayan World Series took place before. <laughs> now, for that, there was a captain running out there. And the other captain was running out that plant. See that those guys never came down to field, but downfield there were six players per team literally fighting to try to grab a rubber ball about two pounds heavy to pass that rubber ball to his captain. He tried to put it through the ring you see up there. That was the goal of the game. But the oldest info we have of this game, we got many years after the conquest of the Aztec by the Spaniards. One of the soldiers of Hernán Cortés, he wrote down the following information. Aztec were not able to balance the ball with hands and feet. They did with the shoulder, the elbow, the hip, and the knee. But imagine a guy this big, <laughs> trying to put a rubber ball with his hip, his knee, through that ring, please. Oh boy. Do you know Shakira? <laughs> 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 you know, imagine that. But let me let me show the comments. Are the comments are original, by the way? We are going to see that the ball plays all the way in one foot. It should the other one's a sandal. That suggests they were able to kick the ball with at the belt. They have a stick with bat that we're holding the left hand to stop the ball with the bounce it. And the right hand they carry a device that suggests a protection with a horn they used to bounce the ball with. They'll be helpful to play the game, but still. Seven new wonders of the world. Wow. The pyramid of Kukulkan and Quetzalcoatl. National Geographic Society will scan the pyramid. And we don't know what this guy found. That was two years before the pandemic. So we don't know what this guy found. Maybe they found the statue. Maybe found the alien like a. Hey. <laughs> 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 we don't know. But to reflect it to the sun will be stored away. And in between the sun rays come through, light it up. They give a shape of triangle sunlight. Let's see the of the snake coming down. You can totally connect it. See the snake? Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The fact they had the position of the pyramid. They had this phenomenon, astronomical phenomenon, twice a year, at least 1100 years ago. Just amazing, you know? Yeah. But why a snake? Why do we have so many snakes around? Represent. This night to the pre Hispanic Mexicans, it was representing the rain and fertility of the soil. But just one kind, the rather a snake. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know where you come from, but the young Aranas are living 36 different species of the snake. And the kindest one of all of them is the rather a snake. <laughs> no. Ah, baby, believe me. You get close to it, one of you. I'm here, amigo, get out. Get out. <laughs> So it seems that the sound of rattle, it was to the pre Hispanic Mexicans, it was representing the sound of the rain falling down. You know the rain stick? Yeah. So like, that's why all the is you representing wherever you go in the country, are gonna be rattled the snakes. And this snake, the, the shadow comes down to fertilize their soil and go back. So I haven't been able to catch too much of the tour, but this guide is incredible and he's telling us all about these pyramids and statues and what they mean. Um, something interesting is he was saying that on this main pyramid right behind me, you have the exact amount of steps times four, which equals 365, to equal a, a year for the Mayan calendar. Another interesting thing is if you clap at the base of the statue, it imitates a noise because of the angles of everything. That is the same as a bird that was never even seen here, which symbolizes rain. So this is super fascinating.
hear that? And despite all those guys that are distortion in the wave, we still lose it, you were able to hear it. Listen to that one. It's done just for the for, for the short way. That's one of the things that the cats are doing. It seems there was a way to bring it around. Just imagine this. No trees are running out. Off a big plant from the ground paved. Two trees fast and people run the river cutting at once. That must have been loud. Yeah. They definitely they thought there was a way to bring the rain for this guy. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. We don't know how long it took for this guy to figure it out, you know, to make that step that way to imitate it, to see if this is a specific bird. Because they were testing, you know? Let's try it now, then. Oh, wait, 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 that's a duck. I want to catch that. <laughs> that's a duck. <laughs> Bring it back and, oh, 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 that's a parakeet. I want to catch that. Last time. Oh, that's a turkey. Sacrifice this guy. Bring a new <laughs> That's how this guy's did, you know? Well, that concludes our tour of Chichen Itza. It was a lot of fun. I would highly recommend it if you're in the area to come check out this tour. Get a tour guide because it explains so much more. Whether it was their tournaments they had, where the winner would lose his head as an honor, that was interesting. Or the sacrifices, or huge pyramids, it's really fascinating. All of them. So next up, we're going to continue on and go to the cenotes. I think. All right, we have arrived here at the cenotes. After a quick lunch, we're gonna go swim in, so I'm gonna be switching you over to the GoPro now. back to the hotel. It was an incredible day. It was about a 14 hour long tour because they picked us up from the hotel and dropped us off, which is about four hours of round trip driving. We had a ton of fun. I uh, got to see some really, really cool Mayan runes, a really cool cenote, and had a great Mexican dinner with some really cool people. This concludes the end of our trip to Mexico. It was a blast and I really enjoyed our time here. And if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss another Life Builds video.